in our continuing efforts to document BP's oil spill disaster on the Gulf of Mexico coast, we took a tour around Barataria Bay with the Gulf Restoration Network and the Louisiana uh, Shrimp. This, this is probably this is some of the some of the uh, discount of uh, I don't the waste. See all these bags and all the uh, different colors stuff in it. That bowl and different uh, they call that bowl bowl. This 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 new one is brand new. Brand new. Okay, this is all new stuff. On every barrier island in Barataria Bay, the oil has soaked the marshes. The boom, supposed to catch the oil, has washed ashore. This land will not survive. It will end up sinking into the bay. Another casualty in the ongoing loss of wetlands in coastal Louisiana. And, uh, by January, it'll be water. As we approach the barrier islands where the pelicans have their rookeries, it's nesting season. You can see the babies and the oil-soaked adults standing up in the marshes trying to dry the oil from their wings, thinking it's water. It's a bit for hours and never dry. He's soaked. They're gonna have to come get rescued. He's soaking oil, man. Huh? Seen uh, everyone on standby on the VOO program, probably due to uh, cause of weather lightning. Uh, very concerned about getting somebody hurt with lightning. Uh, we've seen uh, pelicans. We've seen a lot of a lot of boom that was just uh, tossed uh, uh, anywhere and everywhere from the weather. Uh, you know, the, the technology to fight this problem is it, it, so old, and because there hasn't been any money spent on new technology. Uh, we are trying to fight uh, this oil spill with technology that was used uh, to a limit, limited extent for smaller, uh, more local spills uh, uh, by by uh, 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 barge companies and different uh, oil companies and just small spills. This technology will not work. It does not work uh, along the coast for uh, a, a oil spill of this magnitude. Uh, there needs to be more money dumped into technology instead of uh, 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 seeing who can make the most money in offshore drilling. Uh, I think we've got a long ways to go to come up to a point where we can truthfully uh, protect ourselves from this kind of a disaster. And I, I, I think because of the all lobby in Washington, that was never done. They, they pointed the money in the direction where it would be more profitable. Have you seen firsthand kind of what they're doing out there right now? I mean, you know that, yes, in the future we need to have better technology, but we've got what we've got right now. What do you think they need to be doing better right now? I think I think the vac trucks are going a long way uh, into cleaning up some of these marshy areas. But once it all gets into the marsh, that is a big problem. It's all over the grass. It's very hard to clean. Uh, uh, I don't know that that we uh, uh, you're going to get that up with a vacuum cleaner, uh, uh, vacuum truck. I said vacuum cleaner. Uh, Billy Billy Nungas was using shop vacs and being quite successful. Let's look at the oil pelicans and the oil in the water and so forth as one of the most active environmental groups on the Gulf of Mexico with a, with a big staff and a history of covering oil and gas in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. That's one of your specialty issues. Talk to me real, real quickly about your impressions of our trip yesterday and what do you think is going on in the Gulf and what needs to be done in the Gulf. Well, I think yesterday we saw that you know, they've really stepped up their ability to put resources out there. You know, we passed a number of big kind of supply points where they had a lot of boom, they had a lot of, you know, sorbent boom and the pom-poms. We ran, you know, ran across a number of really large offshore shrimp, offshore shrimp boats that had just a ton of you know, resources there available to be deployed. So I think we're, you know, certainly better than we were you know, at the beginning of this disaster, which you would hope, right, after two months of this is happening, uh, that they would have the resources staged adequately uh, clearly, the you know the the problem we keep running into is you just can't do enough, 
you know, even if you've got everyone in the world hired to do this, you know, you, the cleanup technology is inadequate. You know, we saw marsh area that had been cleaned, and it's you know, it's still got a lot of black oil on it, and it's still very questionable whether that marsh is going to survive. You know, the, the charter boat captains we were out with were pretty sure that, you know, that that was going to die and that we were going to be a lot more exposed as you know, hurricanes come through here because we're going to see a lot of marsh die off. We can't say for sure what's going to survive, what's not, but what we do know is the wildlife impacts are significant. You know, we passed by a couple of rookeries, uh, black, uh, brown pelican rookeries, and saw black pelicans. You know, and they aren't able to catch those birds because they're not so heavily oiled that they can't move. But you know, they've got a lot of oil on them, and we don't know what those impacts are going to be to that. Uh, the, you know, the survivability of that those pelicans again is kind of in question. So, as we look at what's happening in the Gulf of Mexico, it's clear we were caught, you know, with our pants down. The oil industry said they had plans to respond to a hundred thousand barrels of oil a, a day. Those plans weren't the weren't worth the paper they were printed on. You know, they all had the same plan, all the industry folks, and they all were ready to protect the walrus, apparently, because uh, they were cutting and pasting plans from Alaska. So it's really, a, it's, a, it's embarrassing that we as a nation have allowed this type of risky development without having a better plan in place. So we're very hopeful that, you know, as we move forward, the MMS gets re, you know, retooled so that the Minerals Management Service isn't just you know, sleeping, like literally and figuratively sleeping with the oil industry, but we've got some diligent watchdogs you know, out there uh, making sure that the plans are developed that actually will do something, that the industry you know, does what they said they were going to do in the wake of the Valdez, which is spend a lot of money to get their cleanup and containment efforts uh, up to the scale of the challenges. Uh, and that we, as we move forward, if we move forward with the deep water development in the Gulf of Mexico, that it's done safely and that we never see something like this again. What is your group's strategy for, as a citizen watchdog group, I mean, this is, uh, I write a lot about democracy and how to make democracy work, and, and in addition to what I'm doing right now, which is basically building the web press and doing independent watchdog journalism on the web, uh, citizen watchdog groups are a critical part of making democracy work, from my philosophy. So talk to me about your, this group's plans to attack the problem that's out there right now. Well, we've had a very active field monitoring program since the earliest days of this disaster. We were the first nonprofit organization to fly over the source, you know, where the Deepwater Horizon uh, caught on fire and sank. And we were the first group to really document that, in fact, what BP was saying was happening was not what was going on out there. You know, in our first trip, we saw three boats uh, offshore in the Gulf of Mexico when BP was saying they'd mobilized dozens. So from there on, I think we realized, though, there's a niche there, that we have got to make sure that we are ground-truthing what BP and what the Coast Guard uh, is saying is happening. And we've kind of caught them consistently overstating what they're doing, understating the severity of the problem, and we've had great staff on the ground doing a lot of work to make that happen. We're going to continue to do that. I think that's critical as the oil comes into new areas uh, and as you know, the oil revisits areas that it's been in before. Like we're, you know, as, the, as the river, uh, Mississippi River, loses its flow, right? It's, it's peaked already. Uh, it's, you know, less and less water is in that basin and less of, it, less of it's going to be pushing the oil out. What we expect to see is that oil is going to get into more of our marsh areas and that we're going to you know, have to be there to document this. And to